Well, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this virtual introduction to Year 10. My name is James Sankey, and from September, I will be head teacher of Caulfield School. For many of you, the last time we met was at the beginning of the Year 9 options process back in February, when your son or daughter began choosing their GCSE options. Now, I know that a video is never the same as meeting face to face, but I do hope that what's shared in this presentation will help you as you seek to support your son or daughter in this next stage of their education. But before I hand over to colleagues, I wanted to recognise and celebrate the hard work, determination and resilience of Caulfield students. And in particular, I wanted to recognise the way that Year 9 have risen to the challenge of home learning, the way they have consistently met our high expectations, the way they have adapted uh, as we've introduced new GCSE courses this half term, and the way they have shown themselves to be exceptional individuals in very challenging circumstances. And I also wanted to say thank you to you as parents and carers for your partnership at this time. If ever there was a time where the homeschool partnership was of critical importance, it is now and our working together is crucial for this next stage of your son or daughter's education. I'm now going to hand over to colleagues, um, but I do hope it's not too long before we can meet face to face. Dear parents and carers, um, I am Mrs Jolliffe, Head of Science, and I would like to explain to you um, how we teach science um, in year 10, um, what your child can expect um, from science at Corfe Hills. Uh, as you will see on the slide, um, making progress in science is supported by um, the teachers and a number of, of different strategies. Um, first of all, before I explain uh, how uh, Corp Hills in particular helps your child, I would just like to go through a bit about the exams themselves. Um, the exam board we use is AQA and the GCSE um, is split into the students who have um, chosen to do AQA separate sciences, often called triple science. Um, they would have chosen their options in year nine to do that, in which case they will get a GCSE in biology, chemistry and physics, so three separate grades. Um, most of our students follow the AQA GCSE combined science trilogy course, um, and that combined science course will give them two uh, GCSE grades. Um, both courses are taught over three years and um, therefore they have been studying for their GCSEs throughout year nine. Um, and the overall uh, GCSE exams are at the end of year 11. So it's totally exam based and that um, is at the end of year 11. There are two tiers of entry. Um, if your child ends up doing the higher tier paper, they would be able to gain anywhere between a grade four to a grade nine. If they sit the foundation paper, then that goes from grade one to grade five. And those decisions are taken um, during year 11 and uh, often based on um, teacher uh, input and, of course, their mock exams. Um, two papers are sat for each science. Um, those papers will incorporate practical work that the students have done um, during class time. Uh, there are 21 um, required practicals across three sciences uh, for combined science and a, a few more for triple. Um, and the work that they do um, will take up approximately 15% of those exam papers. Um, students are given a lab book at Corfe Hills, which um, allows them to uh, write results in their lab book and um, answer exam style questions similar to the sort that they might find in the actual exam. Um, further information on AQA GCSE Science can be found on the Corfe Hills website. Uh, also, um, I want to talk to you about making progress in science. Um, we have um, year 10 assessments that build on prior knowledge, uh, one per term. Um, we will also include a summer mock exam, which is a paper one from the GCSE. 
Uh, preparation for those assessments can be done um, using the website mygcsescience.com, which I'm sure your child is very familiar with now. Uh, it's very easy to reset passwords following the forgotten password link. And if you do have any issues, please do get in touch. We also provide students with a revision guide. Again, hopefully that's been very well used, um, especially recently. And of course, they have their class notes and further resources that will be shared on SharePoint um, or from their particular class teacher. Revision guides are also available to purchase from the LRC, as you can see on the slide, as are some um, little books by CGP called 10 minute test books, which are particularly good for just quick revision strategies that don't involve using a computer. Um, how we assess your, your child during year 10. Um, students will have an assessment folder and you'll see an example there of a tracking sheet that will go on the front of their assessment folder. And every time they have an assessment in class, they will um, have that tracking sheet and you can see it directs them to specific video clips on my GCSE Science. Um, they will have those highlighted based on their areas of weakness from their paper and they will need to go on to my GCSE Science to complete those video clips and exam questions and quizzes. There will be a minimum of two clips um, per assessment. Um, students then have a retest on those areas of weakness in class. Hi, my name's Katie Webb and I'm the current Head of Maths at Corpus School and here is a little bit of information regarding um, Year 10 Mathematics. Um, the GCSE Maths course um, has actually already been started. We started with them as soon as the students arrived with us in Year 9. Um, the course is examined using three exam papers that are sat at the end of year 11, one of which is non-calculator. Unlike English, we actually have two tiers of entry for maths. We have a higher paper that starts at a grade um, three and you, students can achieve anything up to a grade nine, which is just beyond the old A star. And we have a foundation tier of entry, which um, starts at a grade one and goes up to a grade five and um, a grade five is sits just above the old grade C. Um, the exam board specification that we follow as a department is Edexcel. Um, I know that some parents find that information useful um, in case they um, want to access any revision materials. Um, so what topics do they cover in year 10? So here is an overview of the academic year. Um, we break it down into different topics that normally um, last about half of a half term. Um, and within each topic, they're broken down into subtopics. Um, so um, within equations, it will start at very simple one step equations will go all the way up to solving something that's a little bit more challenging. So it spans across both of the tiers and how it works is the class teacher will take their class as far as they can go. So rather than capping students that you are going to be sitting in the foundation tier, we each class teacher will take the class up to the point in a topic that they think that they can cope with. Um, and then we make tiering decisions more during year 11. Um, so what is diagnostic teaching? So you will notice that there is a section down here at the end called diagnostic teaching. Um, it's a little bit like when you go to the doctors. So we diagnose, so we work out what math students can and can't do with a mini assessment. So you will notice from these little M's in our scheme of learning, and that is when they will set a mini assessment. So we do that at the start of the topic because something might have already been visited or covered at middle school or at first school. Um, so we want to know where the students are so we can pitch the lessons exactly to our classes. The therapy is us basically doing our teaching. So um, we learn, they learn how to do that skill and they practice the skill over a series of lessons. Then we test it. So we it's basically seeing if the teaching has been effective. So learning has taken place. 
so we test them with a mini assessment that um, to show that they've learnt the desired skill. Um, when students reach year 11, this is taught, we teach our students purely diagnostically. So this is to ensure that all gaps in student knowledge are covered in preparation for their GCSE exams. So I know probably one of the main worries at the moment is what about all of this, this in-school learning that students have missed out on? It's not going to be um, an issue for them going into their um, GCSEs because we teach diagnostically not only throughout year 10, um, but also throughout year 11 as well. So how are they assessed? So as I mentioned, they complete mini assessments that happen every two to three weeks. Um, they will do a full mock exam at the end of year 10. So they will sit three full exam papers like they would at um, the end of year 11. And that's the first set of mocks that they will do. And then all assessments in year 11 are mock exams. So we do three sets of mock exams in year 11. Um, information regarding any mock exam assessments or um, more formal assessments are emailed home prior to the assessments, including revision materials, mini assessments, and because they happen so frequently, we just give the information to students regarding those in class. Um, so how is maths homework set? So um, you will probably be very familiar by now with the use of Hegarty maths. Um, and that is something that students have been used to throughout year nine um, in terms of doing their homework, and they will be very familiar with it now. Um, the task for the homework will be set on he Hegarty and or on Show My Homework. Um, it, that depends on whether it's a specific task or if students will have individualised tasks, in which case the generic instructions will be on Show My Homework. Um, it works out appro approximately an hour of work a week. Um, so you know what to expect to see at home. Um, how we set the tasks um, depends on where we are in the scheme of learning and the class. So it's the class teacher's decision, but ultimately it will be on either the topic that they're currently studying. So if they think actually we probably need a little bit extra practice on that um, or it's revision for an assessment. So you're going to have an assessment. Here are the clips to revise or it might be, you've now done this assessment, you're still struggling with this topic, here's the clip for it. And they're expected to go away and watch the video and complete the quiz. Um, or it might be a memory task, um, which is a really good way of students ensuring that they are still retaining previous knowledge. Um, so it is a weekly task of at least 10 questions um, on topics that they've previously answered correctly. And that's a fantastic resource. Um, all tasks self-mark for instant feedback and there is a comment box so students can actually ask their teacher um, individual questions or if they get something wrong they can say oh I got this wrong but I know why or um, I got this wrong um, I think it's because of this can you confirm. Um, talking of Hegarty I did actually want to take this opportunity to say how incredibly proud we are of our year nine mathematics students. Um, these statistics um, from our school shutdown and what they've been doing on Hegarty um, is phenomenal for a year group. Um, we set them the challenge of an 80% plus um, answer rate and as a year group they're averaging 85% which is fantastic. Um, so how will this final half term work? So as we go into the final um, four or five weeks of the half term um, students are remaining in their current year nine math sets. Um, set changes are made throughout the year. Um, so they can be quite fluid. Um, it doesn't you don't have to wait for a mock exam or an assessment. It could be that a, a student um, said to their teacher that they're unsure about the pace or the teachers recommended that a student moves up or moves down. Um, so they're not they're not rigid or set in stone at all. Um, they will be reset in September due to GCSE options. So because of the options that students have selected, it means that they have to be in um, have to have maths at a certain point on their timetable. So they will be reset in maths. Usually we do this based on an assessment. However, um, it's probably going to be more based on teacher feedback and what their current math set is at the moment. Um, 
but as soon as we're up and running if we notice anything that we've got wrong then we will make changes as they are needed um, the work will continue to be set on Hecate maths predominantly for the remainder of this academic year. Um, this work may not necessarily be set by the student's class teacher. Um, that is because we are having in-school sessions with year 10 and with year 12. So they will get work set. It just might not appear as coming from their class teacher, but where possible, it will come from their class teacher. And the topic for the final half term is averages and displaying data. Um, we have a scheme of learning, but classes will move through it at their own pace. So tasks will be set by the class teacher based on where they think their class is and what their class are capable of achieving. Um, if you have any questions, um, then please contact your child's class teacher in the first instance. Or alternatively, you can contact me. My email address is kweb at corfhill.net. Thank you for the time and we look forward to welcoming your son and, and or daughter back in um, September for Year 10 GCSE Maths. Hi there, I'm Emily Rayner, Head of English at Caulfield School and I'm just going to take you through a little bit of how English is going to work for your sons and daughters in Year 10. It's quite a similar format to Year 9 in English. We have two teachers, a language and a literature. Um, and your children will be building upon the knowledge and the skills they learned in year nine, but now applying them to exam papers and looking in more depth at texts. So I'm just going to take you through how the lessons work, what the exams look like, and what you can do to support your child to get ahead in advance of year 10 if you would like to. So English is two GCSEs, English Literature and Language. So for Literature, you can see that we have got a Shakespeare play, Romeo and Juliet. Um, we have got a novel, A Christmas Carol, and then we've got some poetry along with a modern, well, 1940s play, considered the modern text. We then have got English Language. It's short questions with a longer writing question, two papers, one's about stories, fiction, and one's non-fiction. The skills in English, which really are essential, I suppose, are reading at speed and also with understanding. And that is something we've worked on in year nine and we will continue to work on that. There are four exams in total. Um, there's no tiers for the exam, which means everyone sits the same exam paper and actually um, therefore bullet points are used in the exams to support students in breaking down what is meant in the questions. AQA is our exam board. So year nines are currently studying Animal Farm, which is so helpful for GCSE because we learn a lot about how a political situation and a writer's beliefs can actually impact a narrative. We'll start year 10 with a Christmas carol. So actually, it's really useful for students to learn about what people's lives were like in 19th century London and how actually the writer has reason for his anger and his story. Also, any knowledge of Charles Dickens in general would be really useful. Um, what were his political beliefs and why did he choose to write the novel? Um, we will set a summer reading task for year nine and that will be sent home in the last few weeks of term. It will be in preparation for GCSE. So English lessons, there are 10 or four nights, so lots of English at Corfields, and there's five for both qualifications. Um, we use a recall quiz at the start of every lesson. Uh, our students are totally used to these from year nine, and actually they're really useful for making sure students remember factual information and details of how the exams work. There's no tiers, there's no foundation or higher in this qualification. And so we do have fairly mixed sets. Students are provided with copies of all the texts we study and they can write on those and keep them, which actually for revision is invaluable. We historically have been to see lots of productions of the texts in the current situation that probably would look more like watching them on the screen in the classroom, but making, experiencing it as audiences, feeling the same way an audience would. Year 10 builds on skills that students learned in year nine. So we study Romeo and Juliet in detail in year 10. 
but we learned about context and characters last year. We also revised the five poems the students learned and we also move on then to more power and conflict poetry. So English workbooks are marked once a fortnight. Students have a notebook and a workbook and the workbook is marked. But this feedback every single lesson, whole class feedback is really invaluable and students can gauge where they're up to through whole class feedback really easily. Um, there will be a marked graders at GCSE grading assessment at least once a term. Um, what can students do at home? Well, make sure all homework's completed. We will use Educate frequently for homeworks, um, which is an online quizzing tool. Use revision materials. You know, actually revising using your class notes is incredibly useful. When there are revision sessions, please attend. But also we have a really great media club. It runs every Wednesday. And actually it's a great tool for anyone, even if they're not taking GCSE media, to develop their English skills. We do filmmaking, we write articles. So it's a really nice additional um, club that will help English skills. I think it's useful for students to know where they can go for extra materials in advance. There's loads of revision materials for English and particularly what we like to use is Educate, which students use in year nine. You can set your own quizzes on there as well as doing teacher set quizzes, which I think is really useful. Um, AQA, they have lots of past papers there, but also a breakdown of the qualification. Um, the BBC at the moment have got so many great resources, which I think will remain on there after lockdown. And Mr. Bruff on YouTube is absolutely superb. He explains how to do a really good essay in the same way that teachers will next year. All of those resources are really useful. And also, if you look below, we have got um, on our Caulfields Gateway loads of information and additionally we have got books for sale in the LRC once we are back open. So we look forward to starting year 10 next year. Um, September will be a big change, the beginning of GCSE is a big change but we will support your sons and daughters through that and I'm sure that they will really enjoy their time doing English in year 10 and year 11 at Caulfields. Hello, my name is James Harris. I am in charge of Kimmeridge House at Corfe Hills School. And I'm gonna to talk to you just a little bit about how we will be supporting your child through their journey of year 10 at Corfe Hills. Now with year 10, GCSEs go from something that was perhaps in the dim and distant future to the reality that, you, that your son or daughter will be preparing for them on a daily basis. And that brings with it its own set of challenges and pressures, but I can assure you that at Corf Hills, we have an incredibly dedicated group of staff who are very passionate about supporting your child as well as we possibly can. So they will be happy, they will be successful, and we will get the very best out of them during year 10 and beyond. Okay, so I'm going to go through um, a few things about how Corf Hills will be supporting your child in year 10, but I'm also going to go through a lot of things that you can do yourself as parents to help support your son and daughter as they start their GCSEs, because I want to emphasise that it really is a partnership. We're working together for the same goals. You know, we want both want your child to be happy we want them to be safe we want them to do their very best when it comes to the school work but to emphasize to do the best they can we certainly don't want them to be getting sleepless nights or to be unduly worried about their school work that's not what we're about at all so when i talk about working in partnership one of the keys to that is communication and at Caulfield School, we will communicate with you in a variety of different ways, uh, including traditional ways such as newsletters um, and with progress checks, which will be at least every once per half term. 
With the progress checks, can I draw your attention um, that students will be graded numerically um, rather than alphabetically? And where once upon a time a C was considered a pass in GCSEs, that has now been replaced by a 4. If a student gets uh, 5 4s, including English and Maths, at GCSE level, that opens up uh, a lot of doors including most six forms, most college courses, if you get those five fours, including English and Maths, that is key to getting on most courses, though not all. Um, as well as traditional ways, social media is something that we're doing more and more every year. And so if you are on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, please do look out for some of the things that Caulfields will be putting out there to follow us, to like us. Um, it's a good way of staying in touch. We will, of course, keep you uh, informed if there are any problems, for example, in attendance, punctuality or behaviour. Now, when it comes to keeping track of your son or daughter at school and their progress, uh, can I recommend downloading the Sims Parent app? If you haven't already done so, please do. It's a really good tool. And if you're not sure how to do it, um, get in contact with us at school and when we'll tell you how to go about doing that. It'll provide you with a, a wealth of information uh, about your son or daughter. Now, as I speak to you, um, I, we are emerging from lockdown in small steps. And I, like everybody else, is really hoping that we will get to something approaching normality in the near future. Assuming that that will be the case, um, attendance is, of course, vitally important, especially as your son or daughter gets into their GCSEs. If they are to miss a, um, a key lesson of input into doing their coursework or a revision lesson, before a test, uh, you know, they're really important. And of course, if your son or daughter is ill, we will do everything that they, we can to make sure that they can catch up properly. But attendance is really crucial to the students achieving the outcomes that they are capable of. So please do our absolutely everything you can to make sure the attendance is above 97% that your son or daughter is in school on time, in the correct uniform and is properly equipped. The little things like that do make a really big difference. Experience has taught me that life outside of school makes a massive impact on students' uh, ability to learn in school. If there is a problem, if there is a concern that you think that we should be aware of that might impact on your son or daughter, please do let us know and we can put support in place um, if it's required. Now we will have very high expectations of all the students at Corfe Hills School. The simple reason is that we know that makes a massive difference to their learning and to their outcomes. And we are blessed at Corfe Hills School to have overwhelming support from parents. And I just want to say thank you for that. And just it does make the absolute world of difference on that front. If there is one thing that you can do as a parent to support your child's learning in year 10, it is to make sure that if you haven't done so already, download the Show My Homework app and check it regularly. This will show you what they have to do for their homework and when it's got to be done by. It makes that conversation of what homework have you got to do today? A very, very different one if your son or daughter knows that you have this app and that you check it. If you're unsure about how to go about using that or downloading it, please get in contact with us at school and we will guide you on this. But it is a very powerful tool and I endorse you to use it. Please do try your utmost to attend parents' evenings but don't just limit yourselves to that. If you have a concern about your child's progress, get in touch with us. Email is increasingly used in that front. Uh, we're not at our desk 24 seven, so don't expect to reply straight away, but we do try, make every effort to get in contact, a reply to you within 24 hours. But sometimes you can't beat a conversation or a face-to-face -face chat, 
but email can sometimes start that process off. Do get in contact with us if you need to. Try your absolute best to maintain an interest in your child's school life. I know that asking them how their day was at school, sometimes you don't get much out of them, just like my son and daughter, but them knowing that you're trying to take an interest, don't underestimate um, the, the importance of that, even if they are not that forthcoming at giving you all that much information. If your son or daughter has a particular hobby or interest that they're passionate about, as they start their GCSEs, there is absolutely no reason why they should look to limit that or give that up. Far from it. In fact, at school, we find that students that get involved in clubs, um, sports teams or the school show often do extremely well academically. And please do encourage them to get involved with extracurricular life at the school. And equally, if your son or daughter does something outside of school that they love, they should continue to do so. Of course, sometimes there needs to be a bit of a balance as with all things in life, but there is no reason at all for them to give them up. Um, if we could also ask for your support in trying to instill within your son or daughter the importance of presenting a positive image of Kilf Hills within the local community, especially as they go to and from school. One of the good things about Year 10 is that your son or daughter will be undertaking the subjects that they chose for their options. The vast majority of these are now linear courses. What that means is that their final grade will be determined by an exam at the end of year 11. Now we will make sure that they are thoroughly prepared for this. They will do several mock exams. They will be have plenty of opportunities for revision to make sure that they get their best possible outcome. However, some practical subjects such as technology subjects will include practical assessments throughout years 10 and 11. Some subjects, such as health and social and engineering, will use coursework for assessment and that will help determine their final grade. There are also some subjects, for example, OCR sport and health and social care that will have module exams that will take place in year 10. Do talk to your son or daughter about their option subjects. Some of them may be new to them. Make sure they understand what kind of assessment they will be undertaking, whether it is a combination of coursework, exams, whether there are modules involved. If they are unsure in any way, please get them to speak to their class teacher to find out. Teachers like talking about their subjects. Students should not feel concerned at all about having conversations with them, including outside of the classroom, about the subjects that they teach. Now, there is no getting away from the fact that as your son or daughter enters into their GCSEs, the workload will increase, and that includes working independently outside of the classroom. I can assure you we do not set homework for our benefit, but we set homework that will be for your child's benefit, whether it is completing coursework or revising previous course content. If your son or daughter has mountains of homework and seems that there's no end in sight, this is something that you can help them with. That may include making a plan or breaking things down into small bite-sized chunks. We've all been there when we have lots of things to do and once you make a start and make a plan, things often don't seem so bad. Please do encourage your child to keep up to date with their work as falling behind can make things more difficult in the long run. If they are struggling, however, encourage them to speak to their class teacher. They are not on their own and we are there to help them. If your son or daughter has a query about their school life, going to their form tutor is often a good place to start. They may not know the answer to that question, 
but they will be able to direct them to the correct place to receive the appropriate guidance. If you have a specific query, the student support managers do not have teaching commitments and are often a very, very good liaison point for parents. Now, if your son or daughter does not know what they wish to do in the future when they leave school, that's not a problem, but it might be worth starting to have those sorts of conversations. We do have our Ansbury Career Service, which can provide advice and guidance on courses, apprenticeships, six, form, six forms, and of course, careers. Please let us know if you wish to fix us, you up with an appointment. Now, being a teenager can be quite a tough job. If your son or daughter is going through a tough time, we do have people who are trained to provide specific emotional support. There is a fantastic group of people at Caulfield School who are trained and are passionate about looking after your child's well-being. Well, I do hope you found that uh, really useful. Um, a, a very big thank you to uh, Ms. Jolliffe, to Ms. Webb, uh, to Mrs. Rayner, and to Mr. Harris for the information that they have shared. Uh, there will be some contact details coming up uh, at, at the end of this, uh, should you need to get in contact to ask uh, any further questions. Um, but I do just want to reiterate what I said at the beginning, which is we are really proud of Year 9 and the way in which they've risen to the challenge over the last few months and the way in which they've embraced beginning their Year 10 studies over the course of this last half term. I do hope to see you all soon.